Hello and welcome to Living Life. It is Tuesday, February the 9th, and today we are looking at Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21. It's hard to believe that we're already in February and the year has gone by, it's flying by so quickly. I'd just like to encourage you as we start this new year together to make sure that you continue to pick up a copy of the Living Life devotional each month. And at the back, you'll find some wonderful Christian book reviews, as well as blog articles and wonderful writings from pastors such as John Piper, Randy Alcorn, and Paul Tripp that will really bless you. This month, we are continuing to look through the Gospel of Matthew. And today, we find ourselves examining one of Jesus' most famous miracles, the feeding of the 5,000. This story of the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle Jesus performed that is recorded in all four of the Gospels. Therefore, we can conclude that this is a very, very important occurrence in the life and in the ministry of Jesus. It occurred during the Passover season, about one year before Christ's death. So today, let's examine the passage together and see how God wants to speak to us today. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Now, at this time in Jesus' ministry, several things have happened. Jesus had just been rejected by the people in his own hometown. In fact, he departed the area as they were literally attempting to push him off a cliff. His disciples had also returned from a mission field and word had just come to him that Herod had beheaded his forerunner, John the Baptist. Not only was John his friend and partner in the mystery, but he was also Jesus' cousin. In light of all these things, some might say that Jesus was fleeing for his life, but this was not so. Jesus wasn't afraid of Herod, but Jesus knew that his time had not yet come. No, he needed time to get away, time to get away, be alone, to grieve, to pray, to rest, and to be with his disciples, to hear about all the experiences that they had learned on the mission field, and also to spend time teaching them. So Jesus and the disciples, they got into a boat and crossed the Sea of Galilee to a deserted place to be alone. But when the people heard that Jesus had departed, they actually followed him on foot. And so when Jesus saw that the crowds had followed them, what was his reaction? Did he get back into the boat and go further away? Did he get upset and tell his disciples uh, to withdraw from them? Would he want more time alone with his disciples? No. Far from being irritated by this intrusion, the passage tells us, that Jesus had compassion. He had compassion for the multitudes that surrounded him. He had compassion for them. 
Jesus was moved to feel their pain, hurts, and distress, and began to cure them from any and all afflictions that they had. And in the same way, God will have compassion for each of us as we turn to Him and trust in Him. Now when the evening came and the crowds began to get hungry, there was no way absolutely at all to feed them. The disciples, they suggest that they send the crowds away. Hey, let them go back to the villages, fend for themselves. But we see in this passage that the disciples didn't get it. Here they are. They are with Christ, the Son of God, the one who provided manna and water in the desert, in the wilderness for Israel. The same one who provided when Elijah and the widow lacked food. The very God who provided for Israel in every season of its history without fail. Why should the people leave when the one who hope opens his hand and supplies the desires of every living thing is present? Now Jesus really catches the disciples of God. He tells them, you give them something to eat. Imagine the look on the disciples' faces. Give them something to eat? We have nothing but five loaves and two fish. They had forgotten, just like we often do, that they also had the Christ, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, there were more than 5,000 present. We know that there were 5,000 men. And on top of that, we have women and children. For all we know, it could have been like 10,000, 20,000 people. And Jesus takes the five loaves, the two fish. He stands looking to the heavens, probably with his arms raised, and he blesses. He gives thanks and breaks the loaves and gives it to the disciples to give and feed the people. That is exactly what they did. And there was plenty for all in the crowd. In fact, there was more left over when Jesus had finished than even before he began. The miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 is a spiritual lesson for disciples, for us in every generation. The hungry multitude is always present. There are always people in dire need of Christ. And when we as his disciples come with almost our seemingly pitiful resources to the compassionate Savior who loves freely and gives generously, when we come ready to give him our all, he uses it, he multiplies it to feed the thousands. The notable difference is that the thousands who were fed at Galilee that day, they had their hunger satisfied for a moment, for a short time. However, those that feed upon the living Christ today are satisfied forever. Hudson Taylor, the great Christian missionary, says God's work done in God's way, will never lack God's supply. And we see that in the passage today. Jesus' instructions are simple. Bring them here to me. And when we bring what we have to Jesus, no matter how small they may seem, He will use it, and He will use it to bless others. May we not withhold anything from Him, lest we forfeit the privilege, the honour of being part of something greater than ourselves. What we have in our hands may seem insufficient, it may seem small, but in the hands of Jesus, it is more than enough. Today, instead of trusting in our own resources and abilities, let us trust in God and He will use it to bring about His goodness, His grace and His glory through our lives, for His kingdom. Let's pray. Father God, may You continue to increase my faith. I don't offer up the little things because I lack the courage to trust You, but that You 
will use for your kingdom and for your glory, whatever I may bring. Lord, I want to surrender all that I have, my life and my heart to you. In Jesus' most mighty name I pray. Amen.